Hello everybody. Um, today I'm going to talk about 100% renewable plans. Uh, the reason for this is because I want to deflate the hubris about uh, renewables. Uh, these people are trying to build 100% renewable worlds. But the question is, is that moral? Is it even possible? Um, I don't know. I doubt it. Seriously. Uh, plus, I don't think it is moral, because if you look at, for instance, what we see here, Mark C. Jacobson's plan, we see a plan that is uh, flawed in a lot of different aspects. Uh, among one uh, aspect is that uh, it doesn't help the poor people get over their poverty. And as Ken Caldera has once told me in an interview, uh, poor people have a right not to be poor. So what we see here right now, and I hope that it is, uh, that you can read it. If not, I will make sure that the link is in the description below so you can find it for yourself, is basically um, an electricity mix that will provide 100% electricity, 100% renewable electricity, uh, to the world, to 143 countries. This is uh, one of those Mark C. Jacobson documents, and I love to poke around in here, see whatever quirks I can find. Uh, one of the quirks is if you look at the fifth column on the bottom row, total all, it says that 6.74% of all that he needs, uh, all that he wants to be realized is has been realized. So we have a long, long, long way to go. 94%, 93% of what he wants is not yet realized. Now, if we consider the figures closely, we see that he only needs 0.34% wave devices, uh, less than a percent geothermal, 0.08% um, tidal, and then 4% of concentrated solar power. So about 90% of everything that is on this paper is wind and solar. Contemporary wind and solar. Not, not anything fancy, just, you know, the solar panels that everybody installs and the windmills that everybody has. Now, if you look at the nameplate capacity of one device for onshore and offshore wind, it's even the small ones. It's five megawatts. Well, that's not that small but they are not Haliot X big. We would need about 3 million windmills around the world, 3 million. So the interesting thing is, let's, what we are going to do next is we are going to look at the jumps that we are making each year. So if you look at wind power, we've made a jump from 591 to 651 gigawatts. So that basically means that we added 60 gigawatts of wind last year. If you look at solar PV capacity, it's uh, slightly more. It's actually 120, uh, 115 gigawatts of capacity. So let, let's write these figures down because I'm going to... I'm going to do some calculations later on uh, so we can uh, we can learn something new. So it was 115 gigawatts, right? Uh, well, it's large GW. Wait a second. Oh, my caps lock is on. I'm sorry. Uh, this was wind and this was solar. All right. So there we go. And what, what what's what's over here? Uh, we'll return. The, it, it will it will become clear once I once I show you the rest. So let's go back to the Mark C. Jacobson document, and if we look at the final nameplate capacity for total all, uh, we would need about forty terawatts. Now that's the figure that I've put down here: forty terawatts of capacity for the Mark C. Jacobson one hundred percent renewables. So what I've done is, I've, I always do this. I do this to double check. I do this not, not because I don't know that it's times a million, but I do this because I want to check whether my steps are good, if I'm making mistakes. 
so I jump from terawatt to gigawatt to megawatt, which turns out that 40 terawatts is 40 million megawatts. Now, what's this number five doing here? Um, let me show you. So we are going to make something that was hidden red. Um, it, on average, per megawatt of renewable capacity, you need about five tons of copper. Now, the copper is in everything. It's in the windings for the, for the generator. It's in the back plate of the solar cell. It's in the bus bars. It's in the inverters. Uh, there's a whole lot of copper in these systems. And it's generally accepted that it's about four to five tons per megawatt. I'm using five. There's also people using nine or you know lower number. In any case, uh, the consensus is four to five. I'm using five. If we accept that there's five tons of copper in each, uh, in each megawatt of renewable capacity, then we will have to extract 200 million tons of copper before we can actually reach this level of decarbonization. Now, I've got something hidden here as well. I'm going to make it red because if we consider the USGS copper statistics page and we go to the 2020 publication and we scroll down and then we get a, a, a rubric which is called reserves and this is not 870,000 tons don't don't get on your high horses it's in thousand metric tons which means that this is 870 million tons in total 870 million tons so and this figure changes every year. It depends on how much copper is recoverable, whether we found more or not. The reason why I'm doing this is not to show you that this is an impossible task because of the amount of copper that we could possibly extract. That's not the point. That's not the point. Uh, people often mistake me for Malthusian when I do this. Uh, I. The point here is that I want to show you how hard it is going to be to get to this point. So we have, uh, we need about one fourth of the total copper reserve known to man right now in order to build a 100% renewable dream. Now, if we count these two figures together, we get 175 gigawatts, right? Added capacity last year. My caps lock is on again. And if we multiply this by, oh no, we need we need to, first we need to turn this into megawatts. I almost made a mistake because that would be really incredible, right? Times 1,000. So we have 170. We have added 175,000 megawatts of renewables in 20 in the year 2018, 2019. And now we want to know how much copper that was, right? So that's 875,000 tons. Now it's pretty simple if we want to know how long it's going to take by this rate if we going if we're going to keep adding renewables at this rate all we need to do is basically i could i, I could do the gigawatts you know i could i could simply divide the amount of gigawatts needed by the amount of gigawatts added and then we would get it but i would I think it's much more poignant to to work with uh, with the tons because that's basically what got me into this, and 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 it's going to take us two hundred and twenty nine years to get it done. Now, how much times thirty is this? Because we we need to get it done within thirty years. Everybody is talking about twenty fifty, so we need eight times more the resource extraction that we have today in order to get enough copper to build 
the renewables. Now, let's not talk about neodymium. Let's not talk about silver. Let's not talk about, you know, whatever else is in there that we perhaps do not produce to sufficient uh, quantities that has to be equally. So the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that the industry that is required to produce these kinds of volumes does not exist. Does that mean that it is impossible to get to 100% renewable by 2050? No, by no means it's impossible. But if you look at, for instance, the political hurdles, the resistance of the people, the fact that we have a free market and the free market is going to do what it wants. If it wants to build gas plants, it's going to build gas plants. If it wants to build nuclear plants, it's going to build nuclear plants. But we are never going to ramp up to such an extent. I, I don't believe that we are ever going to do it. This, maybe if we got a global government and the global government was a dictatorship and it said we are going to do it, then it would be possible. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create equity between the West and the emerging countries. Equity means that uh, the, the per capita energy usage uh, across the world is roughly the same. In order to do this, and there's, there's two tricks that I've done here. The first trick is I have uh, increased the end use efficiency. So instead of wasting two thirds of our electricity or wasting two thirds of our primary energy that we put in, we are now only wasting half of it, which is a significant improvement. And the second thing that I've done to create this equity is to create equity, we have to cut 35% of the per, per capita energy usage in the West. And we have to add 50% per capita energy usage in the emerging economies. And when you, when you do that, you get roughly, you, you get a rough equity. You, the difference is just 1%. So what we see here is today our total end, end unit, our, our total energy use, primary energy is 184,000 terawatt hours per year. If we keep going with business as usual, this figure will go up to 222,000 terawatt hours. And here's the thing. Even if we would cut in the West, what many people call energy efficiency, for instance, you know, uh, which is basically what I've done. Uh, I've, I've cut, you know, uh, I, I went from two thirds lost to only half lost. Plus, I've cut 35% uh, primary energy usage per capita. So it's a double whammy. Then, and we add 50% to the per capita energy usage of the emerging countries, then we would even add another 11,000 terawatt hours, which is one third of all the electricity that we produce today. So let's see how much capacity this would need. 233,000 terawatt hours. So I'm going to get my, my little pocket calculator. We have 233,000. And I'm going to cheat here. I'm not going to use any capacity factors or whatever. First, I'm going to do, I'm going to divide by the amount of hours that we have in here. So we need 26 terawatts of raw power. If we would do that using renewables, we would do that at a capacity factor of say, let's be optimistic, 30%. 30%. So if this is, if this is, uh, let's see, because now I have to, yeah, so let's see. No, let's do it differently because, um, yeah. So what we are going to do now is we are going to calculate backwards. Uh, don't need to put that there. Um, 
divided by, let's see, capacity factor of 30% times 100. And we divide that by 8,766. That's the amount of hours in a year. Let's see, did I do this correctly? Yes, my parentheses are correct. So we need 89 terawatts of uh, capacity in order to get this. So let's just change this into 89 and let's see what happens. So there you have it. We would need half of all the copper, half. That is, um, that is being, uh, that is possible to extract given the current economic circumstances. And given the fact that we add only 175 gigawatts a year, that would mean that we would have to increase that number by 17 times, or it would take us 509 years to get there. And that's assuming an infinite lifespan for all these renewables, because the lifespan of everything is 25 years. So we're in big trouble. Anybody who says that 100% renewables just has to do this little arithmetic. So 40, terawatt hour, 40 terawatts, that's what Mark C. Jacobson proposes, one fourth of all the copper that we can extract economically right now. Uh, we would have to um, increase our, uh, we would have to increase our copper usage for renewables by a factor of eight in order to ext in order to get there and if we take the approach that i champion which is making sure that everybody gets to live a good life and everybody lives in prosperity and we eliminate poverty then we have to increase renewable additions annual renewable additions by a factor of 17 if we want to make it by 2050 and then there's people who think that it can be done by 2030 <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not laughing at the people who, who who want to do you know who want to save the climate i'm laughing at the people who want to save the climate and think that they can do it using renewables alone even if we would add nuclear, it would be a hell of a job, but it would be a job that I, th I, I would think would become possible. It would become feasible, you know, to some degree. But here's the thing. This is just renewables. This is not backup. This is, there's no, uh, I didn't calculate the requirements for transmission lines which are aluminium by the way i didn't calculate uh, batteries hydrogen uh, i mean i could make this incredibly uh, difficult but it's just pointless the point is that and, and this is why I do this, not to be a Malthusian, because I believe that there's maybe a thousand million tons of copper that we could uh, could extract, maybe even double of what we see today. Uh, I don't know. Depends on the methods of extraction, the amount of money we want to throw at it. But given the fact that, you know, if we look at it from a materials perspective, you see that what we have to do is staggering. And that's what I want to leave you with. Um, sorry for the long absence. I'm working on a documentary film about the energy vendor. Um, and I hope to be ready shooting that uh, by late September this year. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.